Welcome to the Shopo Hour on News Radio 830 KHVH. Your chance to hear from officers who serve with the Honolulu Police Department. Your questions are welcome. Call 808 521 8383 or send your question or comment on our free iHeartRadio app by using the Talkback feature. Here's Rick Amata. Certainly so. It is uh, 708 in the morning. Here on News Radio 830 KHVH. So good of you to join us. It is a new year for the fellas of the Shopo Hour. And Brother Steve Keo, Brother Nick is with us. Brother Mark is still, uh, his parole hearing is soon. <laughs> so maybe next week. No, Mark's out of town, enjoying some time. Uh, brother Bobby's always top of mind and, but fellas, thank you for being part of this program. Good morning. Good morning, brother. Thanks for having us, Rick. Always happy and grateful to be here with you and your listeners and all the best to you and your family for 2024, wow. brother. Thanks. Thank you so much. Oh, you deserve it. Uh, and brother Nick, it's good to see you. You had a frenetic, uh, month of service last month. Yeah. Yeah. Quite a bit of uh, things to do there, but thanks for having me back and eight days into the um, new year, but happy new year. Thank you so much. You're welcome. What's the what's the cutoff date for saying Happy New Year? Mm. I just said it to you, so I'm going to have to say any time <laughs> after the 8th of January. I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> any time after January 8th. Mm-hmm. It is a, a flexible time. How many people still have their Christmas decorations up at their homes? When, when's the, when does a tree come down? In Waikiki, they still have the lights up on the balconies. I mean, sometimes they have them up anyway, but Christmas decorations are still up. From what I've seen, at least in Waikiki. Oh, there's some folks that it's a year-round event. Oh, yeah. You know, and uh, there we go. All right, gentlemen, I just want to start off with uh, wishing you all the very best. Um, We did a bit of a review of 23 previously, but I'd like to get just an idea before we jump into some of the news cycle of Shopo leadership in regard to members. Are there specific plans that are on the agenda for 24 and if so, is there any way that we, the public, can help? Well, uh, let me see. Uh, we just completed an election cycle for the uh, the, the individual chapter directors uh, mm-hmm. for uh, all four chapters. So we are starting out with um, new boards that are consisting of, of actually a lot of uh, people who are incumbents. Um, the Honolulu chapter had its first meeting last week, and uh, we're a full board. We have all uh, 16 positions filled right now. Um, all of the other sub positions and categories as far as um, little things here or there are, are, are done and ready to go. So we're, we're up and running. When you say uh, various sub chapters or positions, can you give us just a brief idea of the structure of Shopo leadership in the Honolulu chapter specifically? Yes. So um there's a chairperson, a vice chairperson, a secretary, and a treasurer that comprises the executive uh, group or the executive committee. Um, representatives of each patrol district, we have three non-patrol representatives, and we have representatives for the ranks of uh, corporal, sergeant, lieutenant, and also detective. Mm-hmm. So total, we have 17 people as directors on the board. And we have a responsibility to um, fill the executive committee positions, um, create a budget for the for the year, um, go over um, anything that we did the year prior, uh, set a new set of goals. So we're coming up to uh, a new contract in, in a year and a half, roughly. Mm-hmm. So we're going to be working on that as well, ideas for that. So uh, lots of things to do always. A lot on the agenda. And Rick, at the, at the state level, hopefully, uh, as long as you keep having us back every Monday, 2024, we're able to come, still do the show per hour with you, yes. educate the listeners on all things top of mind related to public safety, uh, take questions regarding that in, in police practices, procedures, whatnot. Nick brought up a great point. Uh, our contract uh, for all the police officers in all the counties is coming up uh, this July 2024, so we're going to start prepping for that. Uh, you asked what the community could do. Mm-hmm. We always appreciate community support. We're going to obviously be looking for the best benefit packages for all of our members statewide. Uh, just we appreciate the community support with that. Uh, we do obviously have deficiencies in our recruitment. Uh, in Honolulu, I think now we're running about 20% 
uh, recruitment. So we're 20 percent short on the sworn side. I think we're pushing 30 percent on the civilian side. So we need talented, quality people to make the sacrifice, come into public service, help us keep the community safe. But we also have to make sure that they have a fair wage with benefits. So 2024, keep doing the Shopo Hour. Uh, contract negotiations, navigate some other things, Rick, and we'll, we'll keep you and the listeners posted as the years go, uh, year progresses. That sounds great. And how do we stay connected with Show Post? Yeah, sure, Rick. Please come visit us at showpohawaii.org. From our platform there, you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. We're going to take a very short break. When we come back from primetime traffic, we are going to delve into the specificity of the New Year's uh, chase and subsequently what has transpired since that time. We'll resume conversation after this. It's the Shopo Hour on News Radio 830 KHVH. Welcome back. It is 7.15 in the morning. Telephone number 521-8383 if you would like to be on board and have a chat. Once again, Brother Steve, Brother Nick in studio. Brother Mark has the morning off, but will return with us. Unfortunately, we are not on together next week because Martin Luther King Jr. holiday. So we'll have a little bit of a gap or perhaps even maybe create another date or time because... It's going to be, uh, there's a lot taking place, including the opening of our state legislature. But as I mentioned before at the break, uh, the story that emerged on New Year's Day. Um, If you don't mind, I'm just going to play uh, the audio of news reports. And this is a follow-up report because the initial ones included commentary from Hawaii News Now's Uh, former Deputy Chief McCarthy that really riled up uh, a lot of folks, general public and more, which demanded and H&N included a response from Bobby. So he'll be part of this story. But it will kind of set the table for what we hope to discuss coming up with you. Let's take a listen. Once again, uh, news report, Hawaii News Now, uh, that aired on January 2nd. Strongly denying that Monday's fatal chase violated the department's policies on high-speed pursuit, the union leader says the suspect was considered an active shooter who had to be stopped at all costs. But as our Daryl Huff reports, officers did feel some department policies made that more difficult. Shopo President Robert Cavaco said both the length of the chase and the huge number of officers were necessary to halt Sidney Tafokitao's rampage, rejecting former Deputy Chief John McCarthy's opinion that it violated HPD's pursuit policies because it was too dangerous. They forgot their basic mission to protect life and property. They endangered life and property. For retired Deputy Chief McCarthy to come out and say, that we forgot our mission. No, we didn't forget our our mission. We completed the mission. Department commanders have not explained why they let the pursuit continue even after Tofoki Tao fired random shots, crashed a car, and carjacked another. HPD policy says the high risk to officers and the public generally requires the pursuit to be terminated and safer tactics used to apprehend the suspect later. But Cavaco said they seemed to understand this was not a typical case. It's an active shooter. Uh, It's defined as an active threat incident, which the department does have uh, a policy on. Uh, Anybody that's, you know, shooting or attempting to kill people uh, in a populated area, that uh, direct uh, intervention is needed. Cavaco said because policies also ban shooting at moving vehicles, ramming them, using spike strips, or even blocking the road, there was little choice but to keep the suspect vehicle in sight until he stopped and converge in force. For us, more more officers in numbers is always uh, safer for us, you know. Cavaco said officers here are not trained in a common tactic on the mainland called a pit maneuver, where a police car nudges the rear of a speeding suspect vehicle to start a spin. He said that could have ended the chase sooner. 
I think absolutely that could have, that could have um, you know, been used, uh, especially out in a more unpopulated area like the North Shore where they were. One thing Shopo, McCarthy, and many others agree on is that the department should have issued a public alert that they were chasing an armed suspect. At least a general statement or something put out that, hey, we got something, you know, going on in this area, you know, stay away or, you know, please, you know, be aware, be aware of this. Chief Joe Logan argued that the situation was too fluid to put out an alert, which he also feared might bring out spectators. He's not been available to answer questions since his press conference the night of the chase. Daryl Huff, Hawaii News Now. So there you have it. I wanted to revisit the report. So we all kind of have the table set. There were previous reports, as I mentioned. Uh, but this iteration, I'd like to open it up to you for your thoughts, comments, and any clarification points or expand on any issue. Brother? So from, from the union side, um, you know, that was um, a critical incident. It was actually a critical incident uh, at, at multiple locations uh, over the course of the island. And we first got our notification around noon when that suspect, uh, Sidney Tafokitao, was in the Kali'i area, District 5, and actually uh, chased after, after officers in his car and shot at those officers. And uh, a few hours later, we had our uh, Aloke Ave uh, incident where he shot at officers there. And then within about an hour after that, um, our officers were able to catch up to him at uh, University Avenue and Dole Street, where there was another uh, shooting. And uh, the suspect obviously was uh, shot at that, in, in that situation and ended up, ended up expiring. Um, it was a very complicated situation, and, and for Chief Logan to say it was, it was fluid and moving is an understatement. Um, from my experience as a union official responding to critical incidents, uh, that was just about the most complicated one I had ever, ever been to in the last 10 or 12 years. And that's because uh, it was ongoing through the course of the day um, throughout um, multiple places on the island and uh, ended up where um, we had situations in different locations where officers had to return fire towards the suspect. Um, I am really grateful for the Honolulu chapter board on that day. I'm very proud of them. And the reason why I'm proud of those directors is because uh, we had several different locations where we had to respond to, to our sister, our, our fellow officers. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had to call on people in, in a very short amount of time. And they showed up and, and we all got together and we just started to handle things. Um, we had um, probably a total of about 10 uh, union officials total in four different locations. And mind you, uh, two of our officers, as you folks know, were, were injured as a result of this suspect's actions towards them. You know, he shot at them and he injured them and they had to go to the hospital. So we had to send uh, union officials there as well. So um, a very complicated, stressful situation, and um, it's unfortunate that it happened. It's unfortunate that on the first day of the year, something as, as crazy as that actually did happen. But, you know, um, I don't know how to put it any other way. Mm -hmm. These are the kinds of dangers and the kinds of, of real-life things that police officers have to deal with. Um, it's the kind of risks that we have to prepare ourselves for on a daily basis when we go out and do this job. And it doesn't happen too much here in Honolulu, but it does happen, and it did happen that day. Um, and, and here we are talking about it, and I'm glad we're talking about it because um, I think for a lot of us in Honolulu, Honolulu Police Department and in Shopo, we're going to be processing this situation for, for a while. Um, it is never easy to see a fellow officer get injured on the job, no matter how the injury is incurred. In this kind of situation, um, given... The course of events that day, the fact that we know that that suspect was out on bail, that that suspect had been in jail for 20 years for six counts mm -hmm. of armed robbery, that that bail, from what I understand, was reduced, mm -hmm. that that person had done a bunch of other heinous things. Um, all of that, coupled with the media and, and their play on it, I'm just going to say it, um, their spins on it, um, the opinions of so-called experts in this situation and uh, then you know the, the cries from our members of what's going on here how did this happen um, we've got a lot to, to process and a lot to talk about so I appreciate being here today and I appreciate you allowing us the time to actually um, talk to the public about it may I quickly 
can we share the condition of our two officers that were injured? So without going into too much detail, just to respect their privacy sure. and what they're going through, um, one, uh, one officer has been released from the hospital. The other officer is still working through okay. some of it. Right. Thank you for that. Thank you for the update. Brother Steve? <clears throat> you know, Rick, one of the things that I appreciate and we appreciate as a union is being able to come on here and kind of correct false narratives. And I'm going to use your analogy, okay? I'm going to set the table. I'm going to use your term. I'm going to set the table and, and talk talk in straight talk where people that are indifferent, whether you're trades guys, teacher, whatever your job is, you can navigate this with me. And let's just, let's just talk directly. You had an individual that had no regard for human life. This is an individual that through his choices was sentenced to life in prison for multiple counts of armed robbery. He should have been in prison for his entire life. That's what's, that's the choice he made. That was what the courts decided. Somehow he's let out early. He doesn't do a life sentence. He does 20 years and now he's living among us. Mm -hmm. Here he is. Was he rehabilitated? Was he reformed? Clearly not. And we can do a rabbit hole dive about how he got let out early and why maybe that was a bad thing. He's out living among us now. This violent, dangerous felon with no regard for human life. Why do I say that? Because here he is now out on parole. And what does he do? He gets into a shooting and a stabbing in Kalihi around the 17th of December. Now, to help your listeners understand something, we probably couldn't get a complainant in those cases because it was a probably a bunch of like-minded people that are criminals and thugs and whatnot that didn't want to prosecute. But he was hooked up for multiple weapons charges because as a felon, you can't have a gun. Mm -hmm. He gets hooked up. Now we talk about bail. We talked about the bail system, okay? Mm -hmm. he's, he, rather than having a bail of several hundred thousand, for whatever reason, this individual's bail was reduced. Reduced to the fact that you only had to come up with $7,500 mm -hmm. to get out of jail. So this individual now is back in our community on a $7,500 $7, bond, Okay. This is the history. January 1st, this individual, he doesn't even be deserve to call that. What type of individual shoots at your girlfriend? January 1st, this individual starts the new year off by chasing after his girlfriend on Montalua Freeway with a long gun rifle, shooting her in her car multiple times causing serious substantial bodily injury to her, causing her to crash. Who does that? Does anybody have those kind of values that's listening to my voice right now? Can anybody relate to that? Hardworking people that get up every day, could you even fathom somebody doing that? No, you couldn't, because it's not acceptable in this society. He flees. Our plainclothes cops that are super talented, these guys are out there dealing with the scum of the community, okay? They find him. He starts shooting at them. Clearly from this individual's actions, he wanted to cause harm to the public, as indicated by shooting at his girlfriend and the earlier shooting in Kalihi on the 17th. And then he's shooting at police. Does anybody listening right now think that it's acceptable for the police department to not attempt to apprehend this ind individual at all costs. Does anybody think that we should have just said, you know what, we know where he's at, we're just going to catch him, we'll, we'll, we'll go after him later. So what happens? Police follow him. Bobby was spot on, and I'm so glad that he came out as the leader of the union and made the comments that he did to correct a narrative that took this in a terrible direction. What did he say? Right now, our officers are not trained in pit maneuvers. Our, we do not have tools to disable a vehicle. We're not able to shoot at a moving vehicle. So we are operating with the best, we, we are operating within the realm that we can. So we follow this individual. Does anybody listening think that we should just stop, we should have just stopped following him? No, we wouldn't. We, we can't do that in an active shooter situation. And what the public, I don't know if you realize, he was shooting out of his windshield. 
this individual had made a decision that he wanted to take take human life. And that's unacceptable for the men and women that wear the uniform. We, we, we knew that this individual needed to be stopped. He then shoots at officers, injuring two of our officers. They're still in the hospital, mind you. Let's, I, I, you know, I'm actually glad that the radio show wasn't on the second or the third because I may have not have been as composed when I'm talking to you right now. Officers neutralize the threat. We don't shoot to kill. We shoot to stop the threat. He died. The story should have been brave and courageous Honolulu officers uphold, made uphold, upheld the oath they took to keep this community safe, took a bad guy off the streets, and sacrificed themselves to make that happen. But instead, that narrative was not put out. It got tainted. And this is what is unbelievable to me. Where we should have focused on the fact that HPD did their job and kept the community safe, somehow it turned into, oh, Maybe a pursuit policy had been violated. And where does that narrative come from? Can you believe it? One, a retired one of our own, Deputy Chief John McCarthy, 40-something years of service, somehow decides that he wants to insert himself into this. How does he have all the facts to even insert himself into this? How is this the appropriate time to do that? You have officers in the hospital undergoing surgery in the trauma unit, and you want to somehow pontificate that you, from your lazy boy recliner in your house because you're retired, you want to somehow point fingers that we violated policy? Well, here's a newsflash. You're not in charge anymore. And your comments indicate why you should never be in charge of any law enforcement agency. They were reckless and irresponsible. You had cops that sacrificed themselves that were undergoing surgery when he's making a comment that maybe policy was violated. Because what? You were looking at YouTube videos? What's dangerous about this, Rick, and where I'm so passionate is his comments. He's a retired deputy chief. That title holds a lot of weight and it holds a lot of former authority. Okay, and people look to him to be responsible. We look to him to be responsible with his comments. And the union feels that he was reckless and irresponsible with his comments. And because of his comments, he instead of the community understanding that an armed felon was taken off the streets and the community is safe again, it became a discussion in HPD policies. Now, look, I'm okay with the discussion about policies, that's fine. But this is not the right time to do that. I'm going to tell you what. There's a lot of people in this community that gave me feedback. And you know what, Rick? Not one of them cared about policy. You know what they told me? Hey, Steve, I'm so gl- I hope the cops that got hurt are going to be okay. I hope they're going to be okay. That was the first comment. The second comment was, I'm so glad you guys stopped him. He would have killed more people if it wasn't for the bravery that the officers did that day. Nobody from the community talked about policy this, policy that. It is not the time to have that discussion. We can have that discussion. But again, Bobby said it best. We did not feel that the officers were acting in a pursuit, that the pursuit policy should have been followed. This was an active shooter. And Rick, you know we've talked on this program before. Officers go towards the threat. We don't wait. Mm -hmm. We attempt to immediately engage and neutralize the threat to prevent further loss of life. And instead, because of irresponsible comments from somebody that should know better, Rick, let's give a disclaimer. I take no satisfaction in calling out one of our own, especially at the highest levels that he served. He gave 40-something years of his life. That's commendable. But why, from the comfort of his living room, he needs to insert himself incorrectly, inappropriately, 
into a situation like this is beyond it's beyond imagination. And I'm going to tell you something. Our members are not happy about that. There is not one officer in Honolulu PD or throughout the county that is okay with what Deputy Chief McCarthy did. And I don't mean to make this about him. This is about the courageous and the courageous, heroic efforts of our officers that took a career criminal off the streets. But I have to talk about this because the headlines don't say that. The headlines are talking about pursuit policy. And we're here to take calls, Rick. I hope people want to call in. I can follow up with your questions. But that's the comments that I wanted to say about that. And I hope it gives a little bit of clarity and it, and it starts a further dialogue. And again, if you are a law enforcement expert, your job is to not talk until you have all the facts. Right? And you know what our members think right now? Chief McCarthy, enjoy your retirement. Stop talking. And stop embarrassing yourself. It is 7.35 in the morning, News Radio 830 KHVH with Brother Nick, Brother Steve, and we will resume our conversation with your calls. Coming up next, Rick Amata Program, 7.35. It's the Shopo Hour on News Radio 830 KHVH. Once again, 521-8383, telephone calls for our brothers in studio with Brother Steve, Brother Nick, and your thoughts, comments, and we'll go to your calls in just a moment. Wanted to turn to Brother Nick with some thoughts about the coverage and even perhaps taking us to the press conference day of. Nick? Thank you. So one of the other things that our members and the police officers in Honolulu are concerned with, obviously, is is the way that the media has been covering this situation, uh, not only with uh, these uh, quasi-experts per se, but also just uh, the other parts of the story that have been manufactured and then spun. So one of the things that we did do from the union side that day after uh, we had left the scenes was we regrouped back at the station and we found out that there was going to be a press conference. And so to show solidarity and support to the department and to our fellow officers, uh, we, we sat in and um, I am appreciative of the fact that I was there because I got to see just how ridiculous the situation was being covered by certain people from the media who were in the room. And I'd like to start off by just giving a little cautionary detail to, to one or two reporters who were there. Please be careful because your comments weren't seen as being constructive. They weren't seen as being newsworthy. They weren't seen as anything that seemed like you were trying to make a balanced, fair report of the situation. Um, the whole, uh, why didn't you tell us, why didn't you tell us, why didn't you tell us? You know, I, I understand that there is a measure of concern about why the public wasn't aware of what was going on, but that situation was happening so quickly over such a large expanse that I do think that it was impossible for the department to give anybody, especially the local news media, the play-by-play. So the read that I got off of that press conference and the read that our members are getting is that the media is essentially just kind of being fussy because they were late to the party. And they weren't there to get the play-by-play, live, local, late-breaking. So with that said, I, I, I think we're very frustrated with this spin on um, what about public safety. Um, I'm sorry, but that, that's just a bit too ridiculous for that kind of situation. Um, the department just doesn't have the time to be able to tell you exactly what's going on in an active shooter situation. And uh, that's that's literally impossible. So I'm frustrated with that. And um, I, I just don't see credible, quality, newsworthy, balanced story reporting in this situation, especially when you, you go out on a limb and, and you hire somebody who's obviously, for lack of a better term, you know, um, kind of got a kind of got a bone to pick with the situation. Um, immediately pointing to what policy violations were there, what did the officers do wrong, how did this all spin out of control, trying to spin it as if it did go out of control. That situation did not go out of control. That suspect was dictating the way that situation um, went, and the department had to follow its policies the way that they're written. And sometimes when 
when you have situations like that, the way policies are written, your hands end up kind of getting tied at times. And, and, and you really just have to work with what you've got. Appreciate it. Thank you very much, Brother Nick. I'd like to get to our friends online at 521-8383. Again, it is the Shopo Hour on News Radio 830 KHVH. We'll start in Honolulu. And, Alan, I want to thank you for your patience and wish you a very good morning, Alan. Aloha to you. Hi. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yes. Oh, hi. Uh, yeah, I wanted to make a, a comment. You know, this the, the narrative, the, the media spin is, is, and everybody's spin is, 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 is completely screwed up. I mean, these, these two officers are, should be heroes. They, they stopped this maniac, this guy that was shooting at, in our community, killing, trying to kill this one lady that, that he had two, two kids with, you know, and they, they go to the other side of the island and <clears throat> carjacking this lady and, and shooting up, I guess, I guess on Alohea street and, um, you know, and shooting at the guys in, in Kalihi, you know, that that's ridiculous. You guys, the HPD has a duty to stop this guy. I mean, you know, and you know, these two guys that got shot, I mean, these are, these two are heroes. They they put on their, their their suit and they they put their lights on the line and, and the media is, is 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 talking about police chase. <laughs> they these two stop this guy from killing anybody else. I mean, I mean get get with the program. I mean it, it, it's you know these guys are, are at a hospital. They're, they're hurting, and, and they're, they're talking about chasing this monkey around. It is ridiculous. I cannot thank you enough, Alan, for taking the time, and your uh, emotions are uh, taken with great uh, respect, respect and gratitude. And I want to thank you so much for your call. Gentlemen, thoughts about Alan's call? My eyes are welling up a little bit after that call, Rick. I'm not ashamed to say that. Brother, thank you so much for participating in the program. Thank you for your support. I think, uh, I know Nick and I and the officers that wear the uniform appreciate you. We appreciate your thoughts on this. Thank you for speaking out. Thank you again, Alan. And telephone lines are open at 521-8383. The focus on the events surrounding New Year's Day and Kurt out in Niu Valley is uh, joining us. Kurt, thank you for your call. Good morning. Hey, good morning, gentlemen. Uh, so far, I've heard a lot about uh, the philosophy of policing and public safety, and without a doubt, all the officers involved um, were doing their best uh, to keep all of us safe. My question is about the direction and commands given during the incident. From what level of the command structure were they being given? Kurt, thank you very much for the call. It is 7.48 in the morning. Well, to be honest with you, sir, um, we can't give you that information at this time. Even if, even if we knew it, I don't think it would be appropriate to pass it on to you. Um, eventually, at some point in time, we do anticipate the department coming out with a full review of the situation. Typically, that does happen. For example, when we had the um, hibiscus uh, shooting in January of 2020, where we actually lost yeah. two officers, the department did a large, comprehensive review of that situation. So I'm sorry we can't answer your question. What is, as far as internally, uh, the procedure that takes place during an investigation? This is going to be a very complicated one, and the reason why, and it's going to take time as well. So people need to be patient about trying to get exact, specific answers, especially okay. uh, media folk out there. You need to just sit back and, and let the department do its job and review the situation. Um, there are several layers to it. Um, obviously, there's going to be a, a review of any use of force. There's going to be a review of any pursuit that may have happened. Uh, there's going to be a review probably of uh, any um, active shooter policies that we have. And there's going to be a review also of um, the critical incident policy, I'm sure, and how all of these policies uh, link together. And, mm -hmm. and 
this is an example of a type of situation where sometimes, you know, when you have multiple policies that are complicated that the officers have to follow, that officers actually have to make these split second decisions where they're going, well, wait a minute, we have to switch gears. We have to do this. We have to do that. This is not an easy job. This is not an easy job. I can't stress that enough. Okay. You know, two years ago in February of 2020, when we started the campaign of awareness of how short we are officer wise in Honolulu, uh, we made it really clear to people that we're on the precipice here of of going over the edge as far as being short staff law enforcement wise. Since then, since then, we have lost another 103 officers that we have not made up for. We are almost 20% short, 425 officers, Hmm. you know, Goodness. It, it gets harder and harder to do business when, when you're that short. I'm glad that you addressed that because I would hate to have people come to a conclusion to believe when a news reporter says HPD refused to respond. It's not a refusal to respond. It's that you can't respond until you have the facts because once you go public, it's on the record. And, and I'd like to address that as well. And this goes back to the media point that I made at the, at the beginning of, mm-hmm. of this of this segment. Um, one of the biggest problems that our members in Honolulu, police officers here on this island are having, is that we are getting a giant paradox situation of, of how law enforcement is being portrayed in local media, particularly on the television news outlets. We have television news outlets that want to run stories about huge crime sprees, What's being done about this? But then they also want to run stories about officer staffing shortage. What's being done about this? But then they also want to say the most dangerous man on this island on January 1st, 2024, was apprehended by the police who may have or probably did, quote unquote, violate a billion different policies in order to get him. Oh, no. Yeah. By the way, why didn't you tell us what was going on the entire time? Come on. Come on. Tighten it up because this isn't making any sense. It's just not. Balanced, fair reporting. That's what we need about these kinds of situations. We don't need it going off in these crazy tangents that don't make any sense. We're dialed in together at 7.52 with time remaining. Let's go to Ruth out in Kapolei. Brian uh, will be next. Ruth, good morning. You're on the show po Hour. Good morning. I just wanted to say thank you to everyone. And thank God the officers are alive. And thank God you guys Stop the threat. God bless you all. This is just insane. I don't understand why people with a functioning brain can't see what's going on. Ruth, I can't thank you enough for your call, your comment, and I thank you for your patience in joining us. I must get this traffic update in, and when we do... Brian will be next. It's the Shopo Hour. KHVH Honolulu. It's the Shopo Hour on News Radio 830 KHVH. We're back with the Shopo Hour. We have just a few minutes remaining. So, as promised, we turn to Brian in Mo'ili Ili. Brian, thank you for your patience and a very good morning. Hey, good morning. I'll keep it short and sweet. Um, there will never be a shortage of people out there that's willing to take the media narrative. Thank God for the people that work at the Honolulu Police Department, everybody from the dispatchers, mechanics, police officers, the brass, everybody. I I feel safer today. And I think people kind of forgot about O.J. Simpson, where... They broadcasted that, and there were tens of thousands of people. You know, O.J. had a weapon. He could have easily poked his nose out and started shooting people. So Mm. I suppose that's what the media wanted, to have uh, scores of people out there looking for, taking pictures, YouTubing, and everything. And you know something? If that's the reason why they didn't do it, which I'm sure it's not the reason this thing was going on so quickly, so fast, that if that were to occur... This guy had a this guy had a rifle. He could have took out all kinds of people, spectators that were on bypasses and roadways trying to get a picture of, of it. You know. So anyway, that's it. And I know you're short for time. Thank you for the time. Appreciate it. Thank you very much, Brian. We appreciate you as well, and for taking the time 
In moments remaining, Diane out in Manoa. Diane, good morning. Good morning, and uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity to uh, express my feelings and my thoughts. And uh, I just want to say when I saw the uh, retired officer on uh, TV uh, expressing his thoughts, I, I, I just couldn't believe the audacity of what he was saying, and I would like to say I think our community is a smart community, and they knew and know that what that guy was saying was absolutely wrong. That uh, he, he, I really think the guy should actually go back on television and profusely apologize for what he said, because it to me it was. <laughs> It was just crazy to say, oh, let's just let this guy go and let's just come back. To, but we'll come back to him. It was, I really thought the guy was out of his mind. I'm like, well, seriously. Diane, I don't mean to truncate your call, but we're up against the clock hard time. But I cannot thank you enough for joining us and expressing your thoughts. While I imagine everybody listening were nodding their heads in uh, total agreement. Thank you, Diane. Gentlemen, just a few seconds remaining. Closing thought. Well, I just want to thank everybody for their support today and for the opportunity to talk to all of you about the situation. Appreciate it. Thank you, Brother Nick. Brother Steve. Officers love what they do. We get on the un- we put the uniform every day with pride. Thank you for your continued support and support. And I want to thank the gentlemen. It is the Shopo Hour. We will return soon. But, fellas, thanks so very much. Thanks for having us, Rick. Thank you.